Welcome to your first feature cam tutorial. Uh, this is a milling tutorial. So in this episode, uh, we are going to make this part. Um, it's going to be a very basic, we're just going to do very basic stuff. We're going to create a couple of features. Well, first we're going to create some geometry. Then we're going to create about, uh, we're going to go through three different features that we're actually going to create. And we're going to create a fourth, uh, so that you know how to do a fourth for your exercise later on. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, we basically have a square block here, 5 by 5 uh, it's 1.5 inches thick. We have a bolt hole circle, and we also have a pocket here. So, moving this aside, uh, once you start feature cam up, you should get a screen similar to this, if not exactly like this. And since we're using mill, we're just going to click on the mill and we can click create, create new document or we can just double click. Uh, either one will open up a mill file. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish okay. That's actually setting up my stock. So I can set that up ahead of time and I'm actually not going to do that quite yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my part first, and then I'll create my stock later. I just like to have that visual there. Um, if you want, you can set up your stock first. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but first, what we're going to do is start out by doing some construction. So up here in the toolbar at the top, we're going to go to construction, and we're going to create our square for the outside of this part. So you can see here we have 5x5, five five, and we need to create a square, a uh, circle, and a bolt pattern. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that square. So under other methods, uh, you can always use lines, right? So I could always create a bunch of lines, vertical, horizontal, uh, point angle, and I could offset them five inches. So I could do something like this, where I could uh, create this at zero, enter, and create one at negative five point, enter. And I could basically do that and just create uh, some vertical lines, zero, enter, five point, enter, and there we go. Okay, so I have those, uh, and then all I would do is edit those and just clip the pieces that I didn't want. So I can just go around and clip these, and I have my square. So that's, that's one way of doing it. It's a kind of a long, tedious way of doing it, so I don't really like to do it that way generally. So highlight all this, delete it. Um, the way you can actually create a shape, and by the way, these have drop downs, so you can do the different types of uh, stuff with these. I hate that that little menu thing hops up there, but basically you have different options that you can use, trim, extend, infinite, um, you can do some dimensioning here, but in other methods is what we're looking for, and we're going to want to create a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be... 5.0 by 5.0 and we're going to create it at 0 in the X and we're going to create it at negative 5.0 in the Y. Um, it's always using the bottom left hand point or we could use center. So if I use center then it would just be 2.5 negative 2.5 and I can preview this before I actually create it. So you can preview, and that actually looks good. So I'm going to hit apply, OK, and there we go. So I have my rectangle. That looks good. Now I can create my stock if I want to, because that's the outside of my part. So if I go to stock, um, you can see here I already have a stock that's pretty much exactly what I want. So I would assume that I'm using a 5 and a half inch bar of material. And I would probably cut that maybe 100 thou or an eighth inch over. So let's say 5.125 and hit next. Uh, it's aluminum, yes. Uh, actually, it's not. So you can see there it's 1018. Ooh, that's not the right one. Whoops. That's 1018. That was your, uh, that was your exercise there. Let me actually get rid of that because that's going to screw me up. Okay, so in the finish. Actually, check that. Let me go back and change that material. Stock. Material. We'll 
drop this down and we'll make it steel 10 XX. Okay. All right, so that looks good. Now, if I want to, I could actually just hit okay and that, that, that looks good, right? You can see there's a little bit more stock over here than there is over here. Another way of creating this stock in a, a really easy way is just to hit just to hit that and hit finish and then just go to resize. And this here is really nice. What it's going to do is it's going to center your stock on your part and it's just going to tell you how much or ask you how much you want to add extra in each side. So in the length side, it's 50 thousandths. We're going to say 0 0.062 because that's a 16th, 0 0.062. And of course, we need a quarter inch on the top and bottom, the Y, negative and positive. And then we have the Z, which is zero. We don't really want any extra stock on there. We're actually going to call that out as a two inch piece of stock and hit finish. Okay, it moved my stock, so it's centered. And I'm actually going to make the thickness uh, 2.0. Finish. So, if I right click and hit rotate and hold down my mouse wheel, you can see there that my stock is a little bit above. So, let's go in and look at that. And that's actually where I want it, but I want to show you how that's done. Uh, right here is where the locations are for the corner of the stock. So, it's 100 thou above right now, so I have an extra 100 thou sticking up. Probably don't need quite that much, so I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.02. Just make that 20 thou above. Hit apply. Okay. And that looks pretty good there. So if I hit front, right click, and hit front, you can see there I have about 20 thou. By the way, for, if you're zooming, if you want to zoom like this, do this dynamic zoom that I'm doing, uh, all you need to do is hold shift down, and that will zoom in to wherever your cursor's at. If not, you'll always zoom into the same place, no matter where your cursor's at. So, shift and use your mouse wheel. Okay, so we got that done. I'm going to go back to my top plane. And I'm going to use a circle command here. And it looks like, if you take a look at this, it looks like we have a 2 inch 10,000 circle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. I'm going to enter 2.01 divided by 2 tab and the center I know is 2.5 tab to oh, negative 2.5 negative 2.5 enter and there's my circle uh, next I need an actually I need another circle and that one is going to be 375 diameter so I'm going to put 0.375 divided by 2 and if I look at my drawing, I can see here that the diameter for this bolt hole circle is 3.5, which means I have a total of an inch and a half between here and between here. So if I take that inch and a half, because 5 inches minus 3.5 is an inch and a half, if I take that inch and a half and divide it by 2, I get 3 quarter, which means that this hole is negative 3 quarter. So I'm going to just place that at 2.5 comma negative 0.75. Enter. And there I have my circle or my hole. Okay, so now that I have my hole, uh, I can do a couple of things here. I can either I can either translate this or transform this so that I rotate it around and create a pattern. Um, in this case a bolt hole pattern. So to do that I can just go home and I have a transform here but it will always stay grayed out unless you have something selected. So now that I've selected it you can see that I can now transform. So I can select that and I can hold or click on rotate. Uh, I can give it the center axis which it looks like it's already selected that or assumed that that's right. I'm going to copy and let's see if I pick six, what happens? And 60 degrees between. So I'm gonna hit preview. Okay, and you can see that it gives me exactly what I want. Now let me change this to five and hit preview. Ah, so technically I only need to put five in. So some software is different. 
Some software will include the piece that you're actually rotating. Some software will not include that, and you actually would need to put six in. So it really depends on the software, and you have to kind of check to figure that out. In this case, we wouldn't need it. Now I can hit apply, and boom, there I go. I have my holes. Now there's another way I can do this. So I can select all these holes and drill them, but I can also do this another way. And I'm gonna delete these holes, I'm gonna show you the other way as well. All right, so we'll come back to that at the end, because I wanna face this part off first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to features and I'm going to select face. So this is basically a list of obvious features here. Um, and we're going to use a couple of these. We'll learn some more later on. But for now, we're only going to do four of them. So we're going to hit face and hit next. Where is my face location at? It's going to be at Z0. Thickness, it already knows. It knows that I have 20 thou stock above there. So it already knows all that. It knows what the thickness it is. So it doesn't, I don't need to change any of that. I'm going to climb mill it, and it's just going to be a finish pass. Uh, I'm not going to take a, a rough. Um, yeah, so my rough pass is off. That by direction doesn't mean anything if the rough's not on. Okay, so it's telling me what tool it wants me to use. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to show me this tool. So it's using a 2-inch diameter face mill. Let's say I wanted to use a inch and a half face mill. So if I go into search for another tool or make a new one, hit next. Okay, you can see here, I don't have a one inch face or one and a half inch face mill. I only have two inch and a 3.1 inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and hit create new tool. And I'm gonna call it 1.5 face mill. And I'm just gonna make the diameter 1.5 inches. I don't really care what the height is. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, all this other stuff is fine. Teeth, we can change that. We could say it's four teeth. And I'm gonna hit apply. And you can see there, it changed the diameter. So I'm gonna hit okay. By the way, in here I can turn coolant on and stuff like that for these and do tool number overrides. We'll get into that later. So yes, I wanna rename that tool or actually I wanna create a new tool, hit okay. Yes, set the tools override. Okay, 1.5 inch face mill, I have it selected. I'm gonna hit next. Speeds and feeds, obviously this is important if you're programming this to go on a machine. Since we aren't programming to go on a machine, we're just learning how to do this. I trust that everybody knows how to calculate speeds and feeds properly uh, for whatever tool you happen to be using. So we're just gonna forgo that for now. So I'm gonna hit next. Uh, coolant, we want our flood coolant on and it's just kind of showing us what's happening here and I'm gonna hit finish and okay. And if I wanna preview that, what I can do is I can hit play and it will show me the tool path right there. So if I go to rotate and kind of rotate around and see that tool path. So it looks pretty good. Uh, now, if I want to see this in a 3D simulation, I can just click on 3D under here, under simulation, and hit play. And it will actually show the tool cutting the material away, and that looks good. So I'll hit escape to get out of there. All right, the next thing I need to do is I need to mill around the outside of this. Now, I'm going one and a half inches deep, so I'm going to need a pretty big mill. Uh, probably on the order of one inch or three quarter inch diameter. Uh, but first, I want to show you how to just do a side. Say I just wanted to mill this one side off. What I would do is I would go to my features and I would click on side. And I'm going to hit next and I'm going to select. Okay, so this is perfect. I'm glad this happened. So this happens to be a curve. When I draw things as, like if I draw a whole rectangle, uh, it will make it one big piece. It'll make a one, one continuous line, essentially. It, it, it creates it as a polyline. 
or one line. So it's one curve. In this in this software, they call them curves. The Autodesk, they call it polyline in, um, in AutoCAD. So it doesn't allow me to just select one side here. So I need to actually break this thing up. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Escape out of there. And I'm going to select this. And I'm going to look for this here. It's called Two Geometry. This will allow me to create geometry from that. Now you can see I can select just one line at a time. So now if I go back to my features, and by the way, my features, I can pick it even here, here. There's, there's a bunch of different places that this can get to the same thing. Um, and I actually go back and forth between which ones I use. So you can see I have that line selected. If I wanted to select uh, another line as well, I could um, here. Now it's selected this and it's asking me, okay, what line do I want? Do I want the curve? Because the curve is still there. Uh, or do I want this line? What do I want? Um, so I can hit repick, try again. Uh, still didn't give me it. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm just going to select that line. So now it's line 12. Uh, if I select one that I don't like, like say I accidentally selected this line 15 earlier, I didn't want that, I can just click on it and exit out, and it'll get rid of it. All right, so let's move forward with that line. Now, the next thing it's going to ask if I'm doing a side, it's going to ask what side's my cutter off to? What side am I machining? And right now, that looks good. I'm machining on this side. The arrow is pointing to that side, so that's what I want. If that wasn't right, I would hit this little button up here to reverse it. You can see there, that just reverses my arrow. Oop, I accidentally left it on the wrong side. There we go. Correct side. All right, so offset for my Z location. Well, it's on zero, so I, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to hit next. The depth. Depth, uh, I believe we're going 1.5, so I'd go 1.5. And you do not have to make these negative. It's actually a... Uh, it's showing you a depth, so it will automatically apply the negative. And I'm going to preview in case I'm not sure. You can see there, it gives me what I want. Uh, and then I can rough this. I can do a spiral step over. I can do a zigzag step over. Um, it's, it, it, you do a lot of different options in here. And I actually encourage you to play with these a little bit. Um, but as of right now, I'm just going to do a zigzag and... We're gonna hit next. By the way, spiral would keep it. Spiral would keep it uh, from zigzagging, so it would just go one direction. So it would, it would climb mill it. it. Would come back, mill it again, climb mill it. Um, zigzag will mill both directions if it's roughing. If it's taking roughing passes. So I'm just, actually I'm just gonna keep a spiral. Hit OK next. I'm just going to go through these end mills quick just to finish showing you this because we're going to change our end mill on another feature. Finish. Okay. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. So that looked good, I think. Yeah. So I wasn't paying attention for a minute. There we go. So it took two depth passes and then it did a finish pass at the final depth. Uh, if we wanted to change that, so I can pull my results over and I can take a look at all this stuff here. So this is my operation list. So if I take a look at that, I go to rough pass, I double click on it and I can change my rough pass increment. Now it will automatically apply, I believe, anytime you go more than one times the diameter, it will apply a, a um, a depth cut in there. It'll give you an extra depth cut. So if I want to just take one depth cut for the rough pass, I need to actually put 1.5, my full depth in for that. And I'll hit plot. Oops. I just hit can oh, no, I did hit apply. Okay, good. Um, hit play. And you can see there it only did one depth for the rough. Okay, so I don't want that. I want to mill the whole way around this thing. I just wanted to show you how to do a side so that you're aware for your 
exercise. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to delete this. So I just clicked on it and I hit delete. If I pick on the rough pass, in fact, if I do undo there, I think if you just pick on the finish, it'll just delete. Oh, it did delete them both. Okay, good. Some some tool pads, if you just pick on the finish, it will only delete the finish pass. It won't delete the rough, so you have to delete the rough as well. If you pick on the rough, it will delete both the rough and the finish. Uh, but that may have changed in, in newer versions. Okay, so we got our face. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually go around this part. So what I'm actually going to pick to mill this out is I'm going to pick a boss. So a boss is just a, a part that's sticking up. You can imagine this sticking up out of the, the stock. So we're going to pick a boss. I'm hit next. I'm going to select this. Again, I have overlapping lines, unlike Mastercam, where it just has no clue what to do. It gives you a choice here. It's asking you. It's assuming that you want the curve. And that's what you want. So you want the curve. And I'm going to hit next. Okay. So we have the option here to put a draft angle in this. We have the option to put a chamfer around the outside. Uh, we even have the option to have a bottom radius in here. And feature cam is very intuitive. It'll figure out how to do all that stuff. So it'll give you the right tooling. It'll give you the right depths to make it happen. So we're going to actually leave a 50,000th chamfer on the outside of this part. And we're going to go to negative one, well, in this case, 1.5, because we don't really use negatives when we enter in master cam or in feature cam. And I'm just going to hit preview. And you can see there, it actually shows my toolpath, which is really nice. I'm going to hit next. And I want a climb mill. I definitely want a spiral. And I want a rough. And I want to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. All right, so it's showing you just a basic outline of what I'm, what it's picking. And it, this is a suggestion of the tools that it's going to use. So if I click next, it's using a one inch end mill. I don't really want a one inch end mill. I think I'm going to use a three quarter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually, you know what? I'm going to move forward with the three. I'm going to move forward with the one inch. Oops, back. Yeah, okay, one inch. Uh, I'm just going to leave these speeds and feeds as they are. Yes, one inch. And the chamfer mill is fine. That doesn't matter. Um, everything looks good there. So I'm going to hit finish. Finish. Okay. All right. So let's take a look and see how that looks. Space away. Now you saw, see how it zigzags down? on the outside there. So basically what it's doing is it's actually, uh, it's ramping in to that pass. So we need to go in and we want to change that. That doesn't seem too efficient. So if we take a look at operations, and first off we want to do rough pass increment, and we're going to make that 1.5, and we're going to set that. Uh, next, we're going to go into our plunge settings, and we're going to go to first step Z ramp. Uh, where are we at here? Plunge feed rate override fifty percent. That's good. First step hundred percent Z ramp clearance. Uh, no need for any of that. Uh, maximum ramp angle five degrees. We're going to make that ninety degrees and hit apply and let's see what we get now and it just plunges so we may or may not want to do that but that's how you change it so that's how you get it to plunge you actually tell it the ramp angle is 90 degrees and it'll just plunge in there okay so that looks pretty good um, that's what I want right now now let's uh, Let's move on to the pockets. So I'm gonna hit escape and we're gonna pick another feature and I'm gonna pick pocket. Actually, so one of the things I can do, by the way, if I select this pocket ahead of time and I hit feature, it will try and guess what it is. As you can see, it says hole because it's, it's a circle. So it assumes it's a hole, but then we can just select pocket. Uh, so when we go to pick that hole, we could just select the hole first and it'll already know that it's a hole. So it's, it's, software is pretty, pretty nice that way. 
Um, so here's zero. Next. All right, so I'm going to put a chamfer on here, and it's it, actually it's a half inch depth, so it already kind of knows that. It's already assuming that. Uh, chamfer is 0 0.05. Preview that. So it looks pretty good. Hit next. And we're going to rough it. We're going to finish it. We're going to spiral step over. Hit next. Okay, it's using my same end mill. Now, I don't want to use that one inch end mill. I want to use a three quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to show you how to change end mills. We're going to search for another tool or make one. And we're going to scroll up and I'm going to find a half inch or three quarter inch end mill. Something that has at least an inch of cut length. So this is my cut length. So I have an inch and an inch and five eighths. I need something that has at least an inch and a half, I mean. So I have an inch and five eighths here. So this one's actually perfect. So I'm going to select this one. Now, when you select these, if I do not click this little box, so if I just chip, just select it to highlight it, it is not going to actually select it. So if I just select that and hit next, and I go back, you can see here my one inch end mill is still selected. So what I need to do is I either need to double click that, which will take me into it, and that doesn't even do it. So I need to make sure I put a check next to that box. All right. Speeds and feeds I'm not worried about at this moment. All right, so it automatically changes my next tool to match that previous tool. So it, a lot of times it will automatically change to whatever you changed over to. So this tool looks good then because it's the same tool. Everything's good. Next. Uh, my chamfer mill's fine. Not worried about that. And hit finish. And hit OK. OK, so let's play that. So it mills it out, roughs it, finishes it, ramps down, roughs the pocket out, and chamfers it. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, well, how does it know where to chamfer it? Feature Cam automatically assumes. It knows the geometry of your tool. So whatever, if as long as your tool geometry is set correctly in the actual tool, uh, it will automatically offset that 45-degree cutter down a little bit and it will use the middle of that 45 degree angle to chamfer that. Now, what's the downside? We don't have as much control. We don't control that anymore. Feature cam's controlling that. So that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt when you're trying to get into tight corners or something like that. Um, like, like you would on, uh, on your tool holder when you get to that project. So it can be, it can be a problem, but for simple stuff, it's a lot more, it's a lot quicker to program with. Okay, so let's take a look at these. So I'm using three quarter. Let's say I want to change my mind and I want to use the three quarter to do the outside of this part as well. By the way, toggling between these will automatically update the model here. So I can escape out of there. Uh, let's say I want to use the three quarter for the outside of this. So I'm just going to go to rough tools and I'm going to go up to that tool is this one here yep check it apply and let's go to the finish you can notice here it automatic it automatically switched my finish so I'm gonna hit OK now take notice over here it automatically ordered the operation so that it's doing everything with the three-quarter inch end mill and it moved the chamfers down to the end. So it automatically figured out that, okay, well, I don't want to do a tool change, do a chamfer, tool change back to the three quarter, do the chamfer again. I'm just going to use the three quarter to do everything. So it automatically orders all your tools so that you minimize your tool changes. Now, if you didn't want to do that, you could hit manual ordering and you can move stuff wherever you want. Now, if it, if I wanted so like see how I tried to move that it's given me that same warning if I try to move something in a different spot it will automatically update it to auto manual or manual ordering and it will put it in whatever order I want so I want to cancel because this is fine the way it is okay so now finally we are to the hole so this hole here uh, we have a couple ways we could do this uh, one of the ways is we could transform it so we could do that rotate and of course I deleted all those holes because we're going to do this a different way um, all you need to do is create one of these holes 
and we can actually pattern this in feature cam. So I'm just going to create this hole, create a feature, hole next, uh, depth 1.51 through. So if I have 1.5 in there and I click through, feature cam automatically calculates and adds the tip comp to it, assuming that it's a 118 degree drill or based on whatever drill I select, whatever the geometry is in the drill I select, it will automatically calculate that for you. If I want an extra breakthrough amount, I need to add it. So I'm going to add 10 thousandths there. And I'm going to preview this. Take a look. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit next. Um, I'm going to hit next. I'm going to combine with similar holes into can cycle. And I don't want to spot drill this. I'm just going to, now I'm going to attempt to chamfer with a spot drill. I'm just going to drill it. That's it. Hit next. And I encourage you to try out some of these options. It basically is just going to add another tool. If you click ream, if you click bore, it's going to add another tool. If you click pilot drill, that means it's just going to put a smaller drill down through and then you drill with a bigger drill. Um, spot drill, it'll spot drill and we can actually set a chamfer depth for the spot drill. You don't have to really calculate it. Uh, so we're good there. I just want to drill it. I'm going to hit next. It automatically has a 3H drill picked. That's fine. I don't need to pick that. Uh, those speeds and feeds actually look pretty much perfect. Uh, hit next and finish. And okay. Okay. And you can see right there, I have my drill hole. Now I want to pattern that into a hole pattern. So I am going to go to features. And you can see it automatically selects hole. It doesn't know what I want. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to select that hole. And I'm going to hit features again. Now it automatically assumes that I want to pattern that feature that I've already created. So I'm going to hit next. Next. And it's going to ask me what kind of pattern I'd like to make. In this case, I'd like to make a radial pattern. And I'm going to hit next. Oops, I think I double clicked. Yeah, so number. Okay, so let's say I want to make five, because it makes sense, right? We only needed five when we transformed it. Uh, we should only need five now. Uh, the spacing is going to be 60 degrees between each one. That's what this is showing. The angle for starting, well, we want to start one after this one, the next hole after this one, going uh, counterclockwise. So I'm going to add 90 plus 60, and I'm going to get 150 degrees. The diameter of this... See our whole pattern is 3.5. So we'll type in 3.5 and we'll hit preview. Oh, well, doesn't look like it's centered correctly. But it looks like the pattern would be right. So let me hit next. For some reason, I don't know why, they don't have this on that same page. So you have to hit next to get to it for some reason. And now that looks pretty good, right? All right, so let's go ahead and hit finish and okay. Well, well <laughs> oddly enough, when you transform, you don't have to include the hole that you select. So if you want six holes, you only need to put five. But when you pattern something, you need to include that hole. So I'm going to double click on one of these. I'm going to go back in here to dimensions and I'm just going to make this five. Oops, five. And I'm going to make my starting angle 90 now because it would be my first hole. So I'm going to hit apply, hit OK. And I didn't update my five. Six, I meant. Apply, OK. All right, so now I have my six holes. All right, so let's take a look at that. Voila, all done. So that is really about all we're gonna go through in this um, in this video, but I do wanna talk on one thing before I end. If you go into cycle, you can actually change your cycle here. So uh, inside of each one of these tool pads, you can make all the adjustments you want. Now it, already, it automatically looked at the depth and it assumed that it wants to be a deep hole cycle. Depending on what post you have picked, 
Uh, it will allow you to do an IJK, which is what these here are. Um, this case is just allowing me to do a Q. So I would probably pick something like uh, 0.2 or something small and hit apply and it will automatically update that. Um, coolant, change the cycle, feeds the speed. So you can get back into all of this stuff and you can go back and you can change this stuff at any time in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit check and play that again. Let's say hypothetically, I wanted to add a spot drill and I wanted to chamfer with the spot drill. Uh, what I could do is I could just go back in here. I can go to settings, I think it's dimensions. Uh, no, maybe location. Bear with me. It's, it's one in here somewhere. Maybe it's under pattern. No. Strategy, that's it. Once I saw it, it rung out right away. Strategy, uh, spot drill, and we hit temp to chamfer with spot and hit apply. Okay, so now it, it actually has a spot drill here. And what I need to do is click on that spot drill, go to tools, and you can see it's actually giving me a center drill. I'm gonna do a spot drill 90, and we're gonna do a half incher. So right there, I know that because it says diameter half inch. Hit apply. It updates them all over here. And cycle, it's just gonna do a regular G81. And you can see everything there looks pretty good. Um, right here is where I set my chamfer in dimensions. So I'm going to make that 0 0.05 just so it matches what my other chamfers are so that we can see if it's right. So I'm gonna hit apply, hit okay. Okay, and we can see that those chamfers look pretty much the same, so the same size. So uh, that's that's all you need to do. It's really easy. You don't have to figure out a lot of stuff with feature cam. It's really intuitive, and it figures out a lot of the dimensions and just assumes a lot of things for you. The downside is that it's not as powerful. You just can't do as much. You can't uh, set. Uh, you don't have as many settings to set. You can't. You don't have as so much control over your toolpath. Uh, so that's the downside. But uh, if you're just making simple parts all the time, it's super quick and uh, it's, it's great. So it has its place. Um, you know, it, it's just a trade-off. So that's all for this video. Uh, that's all I'm going to go over. And uh, this should set you up pretty good to be able to complete the exercise following this tutorial. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, can see me during my office hours, or of course you can ask me during class.